everyone my name is Ajay and this is part 10 and today we are going to discuss about SD-WAN D-Lock extension. Let's start our discussion with single edge deployment for a branch site where you are going to have a single VH device in this case is single and you can see I have two connectivity one connectivity comes from the MPLS provider and the connectivity which comes from the internet. So technically I'm going to have two default route installed as a part of the BPN0 which is going to be one towards MPLS and another one towards the internet and our two T logs are going to be T1 and for internet it is going to be T2. Since LAN is common, this is a single device, so you are going to have the single connectivity here. You might be running any dynamic protocol. If not, it, this LAN thing can be extended and you might have the single IP configured on the LAN interface on the BS device. This is very, very simple. Now let's examine the dual edge deployment. So you can see my screen, I have a VH1, I have VH2. On the VH1, I have a physical MPLS connected. And on the second VH, I have a physical internet connect connected. And there's one default route towards MPLS and one default route towards the internet. So my T-lock is going to be the T1 on, for the MPLS and T2 for the internet connectivity. And I'm going to have the same common LAN deployment here. A small thing you can observe something is broken. The VH is not aware about a internet connectivity and my second VH is not aware about the MPLS. Something is broken. To fix the broken connectivity and to make the network more redundant and reliable. So next thing you can do, you can get the additional link coming from the MPLS and internet and extend it to the VH routers in cross connect fashion. So you can see my internet is extended to VH1 and the MPLS connection is extended to VH2. Now in case of failure or in case of the device failure at least these VS devices will be able to route and utilize all the available links. Another solution which can be used is something while putting those kind of the external switches in between and the same connection can be extended to your VS devices. The only requirement is going to be here that you should be having LAN routed IP addresses. Rest of the setup will look like very similar to what we have discussed earlier. And the third solution is going to be the T-lock extension. You don't need to put the extra switches and extra physical links to achieve high availability. So what you can do here, you can extend your physical connectivity or the LAN base connections between the VHS device. So you can see in the diagram, I have these two back-to-back -back connections where I'm going to extend the physical connectivity. So for example, if I want to extend the physical connect connectivity of the internet, what I'm going to do, the configuration will look like this, and this is going to be the extension. So from VH point of view, this connectivity is something which can be established. And very similar to the MPLS, if I want to extend MPLS to VS2, my extension will look like this. And I can have the connectivity from VS2, which will look like this. And these, in my diagram, you can see I have used two physical connections. However, you are going to have the option if you want to use only one physical connection, which is something based on how many free ports are available on your VH and how many traf how much traffic you are going to carry over this extended link. You can use the two separate links or you can use one link with dot one Q encapsulation. So the option is up to you.
In this example, let's try to do MPLX extension. So my MPLX connection, it is physically connected to VH1 and this T lock is going to be the T1. On other side, on the VS2, I have an internet connection which is terminated uh, on the VS2 and this T lock is T2. After extension, when we I mean, you can see on my screen, there's one physical link which is marked in blue. And after the extension, you see my physical link, which is marked in green, is extended to VS2 and dash line. What it mean? My MPLS physical connection got extended. Now, VS2 is also aware about how to reach MPLS. So it, it, it should be able to form the BFT tunnel from the VS device to MPLS. From default route point of view, this was the route which was already available. Default route on VH1. After doing the extension, you're going to have a default route which is going to point towards the VH1 over the extended link. That's going to be the MPLS extension. And on other side, on the VS2, you are going to have only one default route towards the internet. In a typical scenario, probably you want to extend both the links. So let's take a look when we do the extension for all available physical links. So for example, for MPLS, you can see it is marked in a green. So you can see a dash line, which is a green, and this link got extended to VH2. Similarly for internet, this is the extension. And we can see initially the T1 was the T lock for the MPLS, which got extended as a T3 on the VH2. And for internet, it was T2, and that got extended as a T4. From, and in this situation, both the VH devices, they are aware about both the links. So they should be able to form the BFD tunnel using both the links. From default route of point, of view, you can see there was initially one default route towards MPLS, one default route towards the internet. Now you are going to have one more default route or the T lock. So first route, you can see it's going to be for extending the internet, and the second one is for the MPLS. So technically, each device you are going to have two default routes. Let's now try to understand if you have a VH3, which is sitting somewhere on the remote, and after having a T-lock on the branch side, how the VFD sessions will look like. So before we talk about that, let's try to understand a couple of more fundamental of the T-lock extension. So T-lock extension, as we understood, like is an extension of the physical link what you get from your service provider. So while configuring the T-lock extension, you're going to have the IP address as well on these ports, right? These are the physical, or those can be dot one Q ports. While configuring these ports, you need IP address. You might have a ISP space from your service provider, but you don't want to use it. Maybe you don't want to waste it. So you can also go for the private series and use slash 30 on your T-lock extended ports. So for example, I might have dot one configured here, dot two configured here. And these default routes, what we are talking about, they are going to actual point to these IP addresses. Similarly, this default route is going to point this IP address. Now, on the remote side, I have a VH3, which a T-lock T5 and T6. So from T5, I was supposed to have one tunnel, we have decision to T1. Now this T1 got extended as a T3. 
so it is also going to have a tunnel to T3. Very similarly, for internet, the T6 was supposed to have only one tunnel to T2. And now, after doing the extension, I'm going to have another tunnel, which is going to be H1 and T4. This is the whole connectivity will look like. Since we are, if you're using private series IP address, it is going to add some more complexity, and which I'm going to explain in the next slide. Let's try to understand the use case where you are having the dual internet connection and that is a static connection. And what I mean by the static, you're not running the full BGP with your service provider. So in this example on the BH1, you can see there's one internet connection and there's one default route towards internet. On the VH2, you're going to have another connection from internet and there's a one default route. Your T lock on the first VH is T1, on the second VH is a T2. After making it extended, I have a T3 here, which is the extension for T1, and T4 is extension for the T2. And there's going to be another default route, which we already discussed. Now, after having this, you might have the broken connectivity. So how we can fix it? As I discussed earlier, these T-lock extended port, they are going to use a private space, which is going to be slash 30. And in order to make sure this, as we all know, the private space cannot be routed. So you need to do the natting, and that natting will happen on the VH1. And on the VH1 under the BPN0, you need to make the interface NAT. And what it means by now T3 is NATed to the T1 IP address. Similarly, on other side, when you enable the NAT, what it means, the extension, which is going to be T4, is NATed to T2. Otherwise, these T1, T4 and the T3, they won't be able to reach the internet and the expected results you're not going to see. So that's the first thing you need to keep in mind. Make sure in, you are enabling the NAT while extending your internet static. In the second scenario, I still have the internet connectivity, but my MPLS is on is static. When I say static, it means from the VS2, I'm not running any sort of BGP or OSP of the, with the service provider. So it's a very simple thing. This internet extension we already discussed. So you are going to see some sort of natting which is going to happen on the VH1. So in this case, the T3, which is the extension of T1, gets natted here on the VH1. Now on the MPLS, since you're using the slash 30, you need to have but you need to ask your service provider to route the slash 30 network. How they can do it? They are going to put a static route on the MPLS service provider site towards your MPLS connection, which is going to be on the VS2. So every so the rest of the world, they are aware about this slash 30, which is going to be part of your LAN site and reachable for the remote sites. In the third scenario, you, since I, I call it MPLS dynamic, and the reason for calling it dynamic, I'm running some sort of routing protocol with my service provider. So this slash 30 network, which we earlier asked ISP to advertise, I can advertise as a part of this BGP and OSPF configuration, and rest of the words can receive this slash 30. And after, Having this advertised to the rest of the world, so these extensions, in this case, it's going to be the T4, which will be known to the remote sites and they can form the BFT sessions. This is uh, another use case where you are having the dual MPLS on a static. So you're not running any sort of the routing protocol with your service provider. So it's going to be very similar to what we have discussed earlier. In this case, you need you need to ask your service provider to advertise slash 30 to MPLS cloud. So they are going to 
advertise slash 30 for extending one of the link and very similarly here another slash 30 which is going to be for your t lock extended port need to be advertised over the second mpls service provider let's not try to look at the branch site configuration where you have a vh1 device which is connected to internet and the vs2 device which is connected to your mpls service provider and in this case we are only going to extend the mpls connectivity over the t-lock extension so from the configuration point of view you can see there's a gigabit 0 slash 3 which is going to be on vs2 device this is my port where i have the mpls connection so i'm going to have the ip address 13 233 240 slash 30 this is my tunnel interface what it means this is the tunnel interface it means it can form the vfd sessions encapsulation is going to be ip color is restricted to mpls so this the lock can only establish vfd sessions to only mpls i'm going to allow bgp because i'm running the bgp with mpls service provider and my allow services are only https the port which i'm going to use this is going to be the physical port and this port is gigabit 0 slash 4 that is going to be used for the extension of the mpls so my description is mpls i'm going to have the ip address 1050 10.117 slash 30 which is so 117 is configured here and 118 is going to be on another side and i'm mentioning you are the t-lock extension for your physical link which is going to be gigabit 0 slash 3 since i mentioned i'm running the bgp so this is my router command and this is my bgp as number i'm running ipv4 unicast i need to advertise this subnet which i'm using for t lock extension which is going to be 1050 10.116/30 my neighbor ip is 189 my description i'm connected to the mplsp router which is going to be a router which is sitting here in the cloud and my remote as is 100 and my address family is ipp4 unicast this is one side of the configuration when we do the do the t lock extension i need to make some configuration on vh1 device as well so here this is going to be the same interface gigabit 0 slash 4 and this is the extension of the mpls as per the description my ip is going to be 232.118 slash 30 this is the tunnel interface since i want to form a tunnel from here to mpls my color is mpls restricted so it should not start forming tunnel to each and everything so only mpls to mpls connection is allowed and the services which is allowed here is https this is the only configuration we need to make and then you need to also make the default route so technically you're going to have one default route here one default route here and after doing the extension you are going to have one default routes which is going to point the ip 117 that is it after making all this configuration you probably want to verify whether my t-lock works or not so two things can be verified the first command you can run which is going to be the show omp t-locks it is going to tell you whether the t-locks is up or not and then you can also see the bfd sessions after doing the extension you are going to see additional bfd sessions coming up from the extended device thank you everyone for watching i will see you in the next video